Alright everyone, welcome back to another Build With Me video. It's been a while since I've done one of these, over a year actually, but I promise you that today's project is going to be worth following along to. I'm going to be using AWS and AI to automate a stressful part of my life, which is organizing receipts. Now, if you're like me and always have a pile of paper receipts lying around, you probably thought about building some kind of system to keep everything organized. And that's exactly what we're going to build, an automated receipt processing tool that can help you keep track of all of your receipts. We'll use Amazon S3 to upload and store receipt files, Amazon Textract to extract the details, DynamoDB to save and organize important data, SES to send email summaries, and finally AWS Lambda to automate the whole thing. The project takes around 30 to 60 minutes to complete and it's within the free tier. Here's a sneak peek of what the final process receipts look like. Now this project is actually part of my newly released 5 intermediate AWS cloud projects. It's one of the simpler ones, which is why I decided to share it with you directly on this channel. If you're looking for more projects that you can build and showcase on your resume and portfolio, I'd highly recommend checking out the course. Each of the five projects have detailed step-by-step -step instructions and there's also a Slack community for you to ask questions if you run into any issues. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Now, before we get started with the Build With Me demo, I'd like to share with you a new AI tool that makes code reviews faster and more efficient. It's called CodeRabbit and it's an AI-powered code reviewer that integrates directly into your Git workflow. With CodeRabbit, you can automatically review pull receipts detect potential issues, and even suggest improvements in real time. You get instant feedback on your code without having to wait for manual reviews. The best part is that it's free to use for all open source software projects. And so if you're a solo developer or you work in a team, this tool may help you work more efficiently and improve your overall code base. In fact, CodeRabbit has now reviewed more than 10 million pull requests and is used by tens of thousands of developers every day. Sounds interesting? Try CodeRabbit in your next coding project and experience its power in helping you, first of all, catch bugs before they reach production, second of all, maintain consistent code quality, and third of all, reduce review time by up to 90%. I'll leave a link to CodeRabbit in the description below where you can get started for free. Thank you CodeRabbit for sponsoring this part of the video. Now let's get straight into the project. Okay, so first things first, let's head to the AWS console. We're going to start with setting up the storage by creating an S3 bucket. Navigate to Amazon S3 and click on create bucket. This will open the bucket creation page. Now let's select the bucket type as general purpose and enter a unique bucket name. You can name yours as automated receipts and then your username. Make sure you keep all the other settings as default and click create bucket. What I recommend doing now is create an organizational folder within your bucket. This will help you organize receipts. So navigate into your newly created bucket and click create folder. Name it incoming and this folder will be used for new receipt uploads. Cool, so now that our bucket is created, it's time to set up the database. Head to DynamoD in the AWS console. Click create table and this opens up the table creation interface. The table will store all the extracted receipt data in a structured format. Now let's configure the table. Enter receipts as the table name. For the partition key, enter receipt ID and select string as the type. This will be a unique identifier used for each receipt. For the sort key, enter date and select string as the type. This allows you to query later on by date or by date ranges. Leave the rest of the settings as default and click create table. AWS will take a few seconds to create your table. Cool, so it's created now and the table shows no items because right now we don't have any receipts. The next step is to set up notifications. We'll do that by heading to Amazon Simple Email Service or SES for short. In the SES console, go to configuration and then identities. Let's add in our email. Click on the create identity button and then select the email address option. Type in your email and this will be where you receive details of the receipts you upload. Then click on create identity again. AWS would then send a verification email to the address you provided. So now I'm going to go to my email and if you don't see the mail, make sure you check your spam. Click on the mail you received and then click on the verification link. Nice. You can see here that our email address has been confirmed. Moving on to the next step, which is our security setup, we'll need to create an IAM role. This will make sure our AWS services have access to each other so that they can communicate. Navigate to IAM, which stands for Identity and Access Management. Click Roles over here and then click on the Create Role button to start the process. Now, select AWS Service as the trusted entity type. This specifies which AWS service can assume this role. Choose Lambda 
as the service. Click next to continue to permissions. On the permissions policies page, you will attach policies that define what the role can do. So in this search box, we're going to select and search for five policies. Amazon S3 read only access, Amazon Textract full access, Amazon DynamoDB full access, Amazon SES full access, and finally AWS Lambda basic execution role. I'll give you a second to find all of those and once you're ready, click next and name the role receipt processing Lambda role. You can also add a little description here, like this function allows you to process receipts using S3, Textract, DynamoDB, and SES. This will help you remember what the role is used for. Review the role configuration and then click create role to finalize. Okay, now comes one of the most important parts of this project, which is creating the Lambda function. This is the magic that will connect everything together. So head to Lambda in the AWS console, click create function to start the process. We're going to select author from scratch, which allows you to create a custom function from the beginning. For the function name, enter receipt processor. For the runtime, select Python 3.9 from the dropdown. And for the architecture, leave it as default. Now under permissions, expand change default execution role. Select use existing role and choose receipt processing Lambda role, which we had created earlier. Review your settings and click on create function. AWS will now take a few seconds to provision your Lambda function. We're now going to navigate to the configuration tab and here select general configuration and then edit. Change the timeout from the default three seconds into three minutes. And this extended timeout is needed because Textract processing can take time for complex receipts. Click save once that's done. Stay in the configuration tab and select environment variables. Click edit and this time we're going to add in three key value pairs. The first is the key Dynamo DB table with the value receipts. The second is the key SES sender email with the email you verified earlier. And the third is the key SES recipient email with the same email address. These variables will come into play once we add in the code for our Lambda function. So let's do that now and start adding in our Lambda function code. In the Lambda console, navigate to your receipt processor function. Scroll down to the code source section, which will see the code editor. You'll need to replace this default hello world with our provided Python code, which you'll find in the video description below. I won't go into too much detail about how the code works in this video, but I put notes in the description that provide a detailed explanation and breakdown of the code. Once you copy and paste all of that in, it's now time to deploy our Lambda function. Click the deploy button and this saves your code and makes it available for execution. You should see this confirmation message once deployment is complete. All right, we're almost done with the project. The final step before we test our system is to set up an S3 event notification. Let's head back to our S3 dashboard. Select the receipt storage bucket you created earlier. This opens up the bucket management interface. Navigate to the properties tab and this is where you can create event notifications. Scroll to the event notification section and click create event notification to begin configuration. This opens up the event notification creation form. For the name, enter receipt upload event. And for the prefix, type incoming forward slash. For event types, check the all object create events box and keep the rest of the boxes unchecked. For destination, select lambda function and then select receipt processor. This connects the S3 event to your event processing function. Now click save to activate the event notification. Amazing. Now our whole system is built out and it's time to test it out. Let's head back to our S3 bucket and then in the incoming folder. I've provided a list of receipts for you to download in the video description below so you can just upload one of those into this folder. So let me select one of the receipts and upload it. Wait for about 10 to 15 seconds for processing to complete. Okay, let's monitor the Lambda execution to see whether the function was invoked. Head to Lambda and then functions and then under receipt processor, select the monitor tab where you should be able to see an invocation. If you don't see the invocation immediately, wait two to three minutes and then refresh the page. Another way to verify that the system works is by checking your DynamoDB table. You can see that the receipt data is stored correctly here. Finally, check your email to see if you received an email summary of the receipt. I've uploaded a few receipts and from my email, you can see that they were all processed successfully. All right, so this brings us to the end of this project. Hopefully you were able to follow along smoothly. I know the video might have been a bit fast paced, so feel free to rewind or rewatch parts as you need. If you enjoyed building this and want more AWS projects, remember to check out my five intermediate AWS cloud projects. I also have a beginner level version if you felt like this project was a bit too advanced for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next
the next one. Bye for now.